Welcome back to uh, my continued uh, conversation, which for some reason I seem to be in, the, I seem to be stuck in this perpetual motion where I am, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm continuously giving feedback, negative feedback on films predominantly starring black actors and featuring black stories. Um, it started with We Have a Ghost, which I did not like a lot. I did not like that a lot, said Sam I Am. I do not like ghosts and ham. Um, <laughs> and then it moved into House Party, which I liked a little bit better, but still is not a great film. And now I'm into Luther, The Fallen Sun, starring Idris Elba and Cynthia Revo, and also, really importantly, Andy Serkis. Uh, which I did not know. I mean, I knew Idris Elba was in the show. I, I did not watch Luther as a series. Um, it's not something I ever got into. So this is sort of a review f from the opinion of the white guy who's blind and didn't watch the TV show. That's a very unique opinion. Uh, how did I feel about Luther? How did I feel? Did I feel like I couldn't? follow Luther. Absolutely not. Uh, this show, this movie was actually really easy to follow. Um, I felt like I needed almost no backstory. <laughs> that, like, everything seemed to be covered. Um, I didn't need to know that there was a TV show associated with this. It's written very well for people to be able to just jump into this without knowing the lore of Luther. There was nothing where I was like, oh, that would make sense if I saw the show. Um, I'm sure, like, there would be more context between certain characters. I actually watched this with my mom, who had seen the series, so she was able to let me know which characters actually had appeared in the series, um, which apparently there are only, like, two, and she was like, well, they weren't leads. They were kind of, like, minor characters. So I guess Cynthia Revo was actually on the show, but was not, like, the main feature when she was on the show. And, uh, the character of Martin, I guess, in this, I was on the show. Uh, anyway, you know I did this because of the audio description. Audio description was here. It's a descriptive video service, uh, did the audio description. And, um... I got the first name of the narrator, and then my Netflix was like, you want to watch something else? So I cut it off. It was like Miriam, and then it just like shouted at me. Uh, it's it's weird. It's weird how I watch TV. You know, when I watch TV on Roku, I have this thing where it just shouts at me about, I have to have it because I have to be able to navigate the, the screen. Netflix is a weird app because I can't toggle it on and off. Um, when it shouts at me. So, like, I can't even mid... I can't even get something rolling and then turn off my audio guide because it completely kicks me out of the app. So, Roku has made it impossible for you to toggle it on and off within the app. Whereas, like, some other apps, it, when they do that, if they do that, uh, I can actually toggle off the audio guide voice uh, so that it doesn't shout at me at the inopportune time of me trying to catch the narrator's name. So Miriam, uh, it's, I'm assuming it's like a Madonna. <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's, she has no last name. <laughs> Cher, uh, narrated this and it was really good narration. Um, I got partway through another British film, which for some reason is also about... <laughs> black people <laughs> and I don't I'm not intentionally choosing I'm not trying <laughs> I feel so bad like I keep critiquing one particular set of films <laughs> back to back to back to back everything I click on I'm like was there anything else released on the streaming recently <laughs> uh, I'm not I'm not supposed to be the guy that's speaking for these but I'm I'm the only one that needs to talk about from the blind perspective in the audio description. Luckily, this film is not about race at all. I mean, there's nothing really about this film 
that has anything to do with these characters' uh, racial makeups. So they just happen to be black leads. So thank God. This is nothing about uh, black culture or anything like that. It just Idris Elba is Luther. He's a cop. Uh, Cynthia Erivo's a cop. And other people are cops. And then we have a killer who is uh, seemingly just like almost like almost like serial killing is his superpower he's like rounding people up and uh we get kind of like the opening scene but really quickly you find out uh as you build uh within the opening part just how many people he can grab uh and how he's collecting and then you start wondering is he alone um, at the top of the film, you see him making a phone call to somebody else, and he's like, so and so's Luther's gonna be a problem. Um, and so they have to take care of Luther, which gets him, they release some sort of information that gets him thrown in jail, so Luther's in jail for a while. Um, and he's also, like, Luther just wants to be able to finish this case. He just wants to be able to get out of jail so he can catch this killer. That continues to kill while he's locked behind bars, unable to uh, help solve the, the mystery. Um, and, uh, yeah, without necessarily spoiling the rest of the film, that's really all I can tell you. Um, it's, uh, it's Andy Circus. The film is pretty much upfront. It's really upfront about who the killer is. Uh, Andy Serkis from uh, or very early on Andy Serkis is obviously the killer um, or a killer or you know whatever but you can tell he's the bad guy uh, behind all of this so and Andy Serkis's performance actually powers through this film I thought he was terrific uh, really creepy really um he handles sort of the the um, scene chewing nature of this character. Uh, it's very um, I don't know. It's the kind of serial killer that wa that thinks it's smarter than you uh, and has devised this great plan, almost like a Bond villain. You know, like, he's, he thinks he's five steps ahead of you. It doesn't really, hasn't really accounted for the fact of just how good Luther is. Um, and then that's, you know, obviously, like, leads to how the film goes. Um, I think that the question for everybody is going to be, will Luther survive this? Will, you know, or is this the, is this a conclusion movie for Luther? And that's the question you're going to have to ask yourself all the way until the end, because there are some times where Luther is put into a situation that he may or may not survive out of, and I'm not going to spoil any of those situations for you as to whether or not this is the end of Luther. Uh, this film's getting sort of mixed reviews. I don't really know why. I mean, Idris does a good job. I'm not familiar with the series. I suppose maybe from like a fan standpoint, if you watch the series and you watch the movie, and maybe this movie is crap. To, compared to the series I have no idea but as somebody coming in who hasn't seen the series I thought this was an interesting detective story I don't know that it's necessarily revolutionary I feel like I've seen this kind of thing before um there are images and imagery that uh uh and things that they choose to do that I thought were haunting and creepier than usual uh, I wouldn't watch this with kids. Uh, it's, I don't necessarily know how gory it is. The audio description doesn't really lean in on gore, but there are a lot of dead bodies in this. <laughs> Just, uh, it's a lot of dead bodies. Um, so it becomes really hard to, uh, yeah be a be a, fa a family affair um i don't know if you already know that from being a watcher of the tv series i don't know how dark the tv series was my mom said the tv series was dark too it was you know 
always he was always Luther was always trying to tackle a, a similar nature crime. I guess he never helps get cats out of trees or anything happy like that. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's it's a good it's a good film. I don't know if it's a great film, um, but uh, it's a good character for Idris. It's a good character for Cynthia, and it's a great character for Andy. Um, seeing Andy just uh, sort of... Uh, it's its so interesting when you are uh, you have the freedom at the very beginning to be the villain, and the film lets you uh, do the villain thing the whole film. You know, there's no secret about it. There's no mystery. The mystery is who is he. The mystery is that they're trying to uncover like, his actual name, like, who is this guy, uh, what is his history, what is his backstory, what is his reasoning, what is his motive, uh, where might we find him, but as a viewer, you know it's Andy Serkis, like, he's walking around the whole movie being very obvious about it, and he tries to interject himself into people's lives, um, so it's, he has such a strong presence in the film that, that's the part that I found interesting is it feels like it feels a little bit to me like seven if at the very beginning of the film Kevin Spacey walks in and says it's me <laughs> and then somehow like runs away <laughs> and gets away and then we see the killings and they're like oh we gotta catch this guy and we just see Kevin Spacey the whole time and he's like watching you know that would be sort of the best comparison I could give you to Luther. It would be, that's a little bit what it feels like. Um, so, uh, I th yeah, the audio description here is fantastic. The other film I started watching and haven't finished reviewing is also British and also has British audio description. I gotta say, like, the British audio description is, is fantastic. Um, there's so many little layers that they throw in. They always try to find a new way, a new adjective of describing somebody or something, uh, when they, uh, when they see them again, or they make sure that you know how somebody's dressed, um, there's a, you know, there's a scene where Luther steps out, and he's wearing a very specific set of clothes, and I guess it's the set of clothes that he always wears in the series, so it, not only does it just describe to you the set of clothes, but it also lets you know that it's this typical set of clothes. So if you're somebody who's not familiar with the show, you know, like, oh, shit, he's wearing his signature look. Oh, this means business. <laughs> you know, you're like, <laughs> it's that kind of thing. Like, he's, he's got all, he's got his, his suit on. He's got, he's got the, the blue, blue shirt with the tie and the overcoat and, He's ready to be Luther again, you know, like in that moment. He's 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 all he's dressed to the nines. So it's the little things. Um you know, they didn't need to remind me that it, it was uh, his typical outfit. They could have just described it, but it's that little interesting other tidbit of information where now I'm like, Oh, oh, that's his signature look cool, so this means something, this means something to the people who watch Luther, so, little things, when you make little choices like that, I think those things really matter to the people who have watched the show before, so I think this has excellent audio description, and I'm glad to have reviewed it, um, it's a bit long, I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit long, it's a bit repetitive, not everything makes sense, uh, there were some moments where I just, I was sitting there and I was like, wait a minute, what the fuck? Are you, are you kidding? Like, um, I wish I could talk about them because they're very spoilery. Uh, they're just, if you think I've said anything, I haven't said anything spoilery. Uh, this is, the, the other stuff would be, um, stuff that just doesn't make sense or is repetitive in nature. And you're just like, I don't understand how this has happening right now. Would they... Uh, how can you be this inept? Uh, you know, like, you think about, like, the government structure in the UK, and you're just like, I, 
is anybody what's what's MI five doing right now? What's MI six doing? What are they what what are they, what are they doing? What's going on? So um yeah, it's uh it, it can be that sometimes too. So I don't think this is going to break new ground, but I do think it's interesting and Andy Serkis's performance is memorable. Uh, I think he probably felt like he had to really raise the stakes because he's the one that's coming into the franchise and he's the big bad for the movie. So he really goes for it. Um, and it was, it was really great to see. Meanwhile, the other characters feel constrained by how we know their previous characters and what was already set, the tone that was set for them in the TV series they have to sort of maintain but with Circus, he just gets to come in and he's like, look, I, I, you didn't know who I was before. So I can do whatever the hell I want. And I'm going to absolutely eat up the scenery. <laughs> so uh, he has a great job. Uh, it's a decent film. And I'm going to give Luther and the Fallen Sun a B. I thought it was fine. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to remember Andy Serkis' performance at the end of the year. I'm not, I don't think he's going to make my top ten list or anything like that. I love Andy Serkis. Uh, I think he is overdue for an Oscar nomination, but for all of the performances that he'll never get an Oscar nomination for. Um, if I could go back in time, uh, Andy Serkis would have been nominated for, uh, for Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Um, yeah. I would nominate him for that, for playing Caesar in Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Um, it was groundbreaking work then. It became sort of less impressive, even though the stories were still great in, in the two sequels. The fact that he was Caesar and that he created that character and that performance, um, it's, it's really kind of sad that we immediately write off all motion capture performances because Circus gave such a, a tremendous performance as Gollum and then also as Caesar and actually as Kong. He was also King Kong in Peter Jackson's film, which doesn't really make any sense. I, I can't see... Uh, I want to see the scene where Andy Circus is holding out his hand and like Naomi Watts is like standing on his hand <laughs> So, um, but yeah, he helped to shape that character, but the one that, uh, he, sh he, yeah, he should have already had an Oscar nomination either for Gollum or for Caesar, but my pick would be Caesar. Uh, I thought Bride was a great film. So anyway, ah, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I will continue to talk about films of audio description, and I've already got a film that I'm like halfway through so i'll um, have that ready for you tomorrow and i also have a website mac the movie guy.com uh, you can follow me on twitter or instagram at mac the movie guy you can go to the audio description project adp.acb.org it'll let you know what is audio description where you can watch it and you can go to the adna.org that's the adna.org it'll let you know you know, who is narrating your favorite films and television series like Miriam? Um, yes. Uh, she's like Cher. <laughs> so, um, anyway, that's it. Um, I, uh, will review something else for you guys and catch you on the other side.